So the question is, what makes a good long run shoe? And the answer is simple. It's the shoes that provide the comfort over the duration, the shoes that build confidence when we need it the most, and the shoes that we instinctively gravitate towards when we know we're gonna be out there for a long time and we want to have some fun in. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm sharing with you guys my five most used long run shoes of 2022. So I've gone through my Strava training log to put this list together and I've got the top five shoes that I've used the most this year for the long runs, the volume of runs that I've done, the number and the volume of mileage that I have put into them during those long runs. So we're gonna share all of that shortly. The criteria for this is simple. Whatever I've got in my Strava training log that is labeled as a long run, I have used to put this data together. It doesn't include the first week or almost the first month of January, just because I was coming back for an injury. Everything else after that has been included so let's dive into this list I'm excited to share with you guys which are the shoes that I've used the most this year and of course before we dive in let me know in the comments below what your favorite long run shoe of the year has been in 2022 and if you can let us know how many runs and how much mileage you put in them let me know why they're your favorite in the comments below if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content let's dive in and start with number five Propping up the list at number five is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. What a shoe this has been this year for me. Only used twice on the long run, 47.79 miles done in the shoe for the long runs, but well over 100 miles in the shoe. That other mileage has been com uh, comprised of a seven bridge half marathon PB, uh, a course PB I should say in the third place there, plus other workouts during the summer. And I reached for this shoe for my long run in that second statement that I said in the intro, confidence building. So this came out during my London Marathon training in the height of my longer mileage runs. Some of the biggest long runs were done in this shoe. It was a shoe that provided the comfort that I needed for the duration and it built confidence in what I was doing. A shoe that was just easy to slip on, glide out through the forest, Tr uh, transition from the very, very light trails that I use onto the uh, onto the tarmac for the big loop and the smaller loop if you were following the training, and it was just absolutely seamless. It was a shoe that I didn't want to use too much because I wanted to really save it for racing, although that being said, the mileage in it now is much, much higher, but I have to say it was a great confidence building shoe for those long runs. And let's wind the clock back to the beginning of the year for shoe in the fourth spot, the Saucony Endorphin Shield. No, it's Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 Run Shield, a winterized shoe that was great in those earlier months in the year. They got shelved through the summer months. We'll probably come back out at some point in the winter. They got over 200 miles in them, but I managed to get three long runs in the shoe, totaling 48.46 miles. So if you notice an extra long run, but only one mile extra than the Endorphin Pro 3s. It shows you the difference in the shoe, the way I use the shoes. The Speed 2 Run Shield was more of a kind of a medium length long run shoe, whereas I went for the Pro 3 for those longer, harder efforts, shall we say. But the Speed 2 Run Shield was just a great cruising shoe that I found always good with any speed iteration that I've tested, one and two, for those longer marathon pace intervals. I do a lot of sessions in them plus those longer runs. They're just a great shoe in that remit of my training. Never really gravitated towards them for the shorter, sharper stuff, but for anything longer, anything in the half marathon and above, they've always been a shoe that I've gone for. That coupled with the fact that they were the run shield version, keeping my feet warm in those freezing months back in January and February, uh, back in February and March, sorry, were absolutely fantastic. So that is the fourth place shoe. And in at spot number three comes the Zoom Fly 5 from Nike, aka another brick. I know a lot of you guys were really shocked that I really fell in love with this shoe. It's one of those shoes that really has divided opinion. A big upgrade from version four, ditching that React, moving to the Zoom X, but it's recycled Zoom X encased in an SRO2 casing, which is another phone that basically holds all of that scrap Zoom X together. It's heavy. It's not a shoe for everybody, and a lot of you were really surprised that I was even putting, being bothered to put the mileage into it. But I got four long runs in the shoe, totaling 75.76 miles, and still a shoe right now that I'm gravitating more towards. And in fact, it was a shoe that I did my last long run in last week. So, why this shoe? 
I found myself to be ridiculously efficient in this shoe. My heart rate was always really low every time I ran in it. It was a very cruisy shoe. Yes, it was heavy, but I found the transition from uh, that training shoe into the Nike racing shoe such a seamless thing. Just like the racing partners that a lot of these companies are producing, like the Asics Magic Speed 2 into their Meta Speed series, Sky or Edge, like the Endorphin Speeds into the Pros and the Zoom X, uh, the Zoom Flies into the Vapor Flies. This is what it's designed for that transition of training and heavier iteration move into the lighter race day model. I never touched the Zoom Fly 4, I had the Zoom Fly 3, I had a love-hate relationship with it, very similar to similar geometry to the Zoom uh, to the Vaporfly, and I liked that transition, but the React midsole in it was just heavy and clunky. And although this Zoom X, don't get me wrong, is heavy and clunky, I do find there to be a bit more bounce and a bit more cushion, and actually they cradle my feet really, really nicely. My feet feel really good after I've been in the shoe for a long time, and I always feel well, like I have fresh legs once I've run in them. So they're a shoe that, although divides opinion, have been a massive success for me. And a potential shoe of the year candidate comes in at number two, the Asics Nova Blast 3. Impressive considering it only came into the rotation in September. Five long runs so far, 74.96 miles. So actually a mile less than the Zoom Fly 5, but one extra run. Why have I gravitated toward this shoe? comfort levels through the roof, bounce through the roof, delivers me everything I want it to, like what a plated shoe would, but without the plate and also its lightweight nature, a shoe that you can just slip on and cruise. I've talked way too much about the Nova Blast 3 uh, recently in videos, and it's just a case of this shoe has suddenly gone from an easy day, plodding shooter, maybe a bit of moderate work, to something that can expand right up to marathon pace and tempo work. I find now with this shoe, it's such a great shoe to reach for. If I don't want a plated option that's lightweight and is going to move me fast, I tend to now use the Endorphin Shift 3 for easy runs just because the Nova Blast is so bouncy. I find myself moving so, so well in the shoe. And yeah, it's a shoe that I've absolutely loved for those long runs. And it's just one of those shoes that I think has now completely changed categories, put itself in its own kind of completely different realm from the previous versions and suddenly just lit up the long run stage for me because I always went for the Nova Blast 1 and 2s on easier long runs, but never use them for anything faster. But check in Strava, I've used these for some up-tempo type of long runs, some long runs with a bit of oomph in them and not just those easy day plodding long runs. So number two, the running out of spot is the Nova Blast 3. And the winner of this whole thing, if you want to call it a winner, the most used long run shoe of 2022 for me is indeed the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. What a shoe. If you follow the channel, you know my love for this shoe. This is by far for me the best non-plated running shoe out there. This is a shoe that offers me everything I need and it's the first shoe that I ever bought a second pair of. I'd never bought a second pair of another pair of shoes ever. Like I hadn't, despite my love for the Nova Blast 1s and 2s and 3s, I've never bought a second pair. The Hyperion Tempo offers me everything I need during marathon training for those longer intervals, just like the speeds do, but I find the tempos better. They work for me so well. I now have 364 miles in them, similar to what my last pair got to, and they have now pretty much gone flat and I'm gonna to have to retire them. That's the type of mileage that I've come to expect from the tempos, but for me, the value that I get in terms of mileage, that's irrelevant. The pleasure I get from running this shoe is absolutely insane. Nine long runs, 149.64 miles. That is pretty much double any other shoe in this list. So why, why so much? Well, this shoe was used a lot in the early days of marathon training. In fact, before that, when I was doing some slightly shorter training as well, and my long runs were a little bit shorter, I was choosing them for any anything like I find them so great in the summer on on the dusty fire track trails they're just absolutely perfect I love the DNA flash midsole it's that perfect combination where you get the bounce and responsiveness but you don't sink into it too much is everything you need from a long run shoe. I genuinely cannot recommend this shoe highly enough. Now, when I bought my second pair, I couldn't find any sales on the shoe whatsoever. I still paid full price, 140 odd pounds or whatever it was, or I think I got like a 10% discount on it. 
Fast forward to now, I believe these shoes are on discount. You can get them a little bit cheaper and I'm genuinely considering buying a third pair because as of right now, I haven't tested another non-plated racing shoe with a decent stack height in it better than the Hyperion Tempo. And just before I ask you questions, I am very aware the Hyperion Max is looking to come out in 2023. So that is something I'm keeping my eye on because it's a shoe that I definitely want to test out. Otherwise, if they don't do that in my size or for whatever reason, it doesn't come out for a while, I probably will end up grabbing another pair of Tempos for marathon training during January, February and March leading into my April marathon. But enough of that, that is my list. What about yours? Let me hear from you, as I said in the intro, what your favorite long run shoes have been. I don't expect you to total everything up. I just love to hear why you choose a certain shoe for the long run and let me know and let everybody else know what your recommendations are. And actually, I'm speaking to you here saying the Hyperion Tempo for me is the best non-plated long run shoe when you wanna pick up the pace a bit and you wanna give it a bit of oomph. Other than the speed, which I know has a nylon plate, some people class it as having something, some people just say, oh, it's a bit of a stabiliser, it's nothing crazy. I get that. Anything other than that, let me know what your recommendations are. I'm all ears, I'm open to testing other shoes, and I can't wait to hear what your suggestions are. But anyway, that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I've enjoyed making this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and let me see what your shoes are. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.